Hello, everyone, and welcome to a jam-packed episode of Weekly Oscar Talk. Golden Globes winners, SAG nominations, PGA nominations, DGA nominations, Critics' Choice coming up soon. So lots of stuff to talk about, and I'm here with Anthony, as always, to talk about all of it. Yes, aside from Oscar nominations week and the Oscars themselves, I imagine this will be our busiest week of news. Probably, Um, yeah. Because I think when it comes to the awards and the actual giving out of these nominations, they've they've done them more evenly than announcing their nominations. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a lot, and it is a completely different season now. A week later, and I'm excited to get into it. Yeah, starting off with the Golden Globes. Um, overall, what did you watch the show? What did you think of the show? I did watch the show. I think as far as the wins were concerned i was pretty positive on who they awarded um i thought that whatever reason they came to honor these individuals i thought that they were all worthy and 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 different aspects um my issues were more with the show itself uh for some reason it felt so long i've never felt an award show be as long as it was and i think Maybe that's something to do with the host. I wasn't the biggest fan of Gerard Carmichael. I thought that, I don't know, just the pacing at the beginning and then sitting on the stage, it was just, and then so often, I mean, I think the Eddie Murphy speech kind of crystallized because they both did Will Smith jokes, but I found Eddie Murphy's to be a lot funnier and more surprising. So maybe it was just that I didn't find Gerard Carmichael that funny, but that didn't help. But as far as the wins go and what they mean for the award season, we can get into that, but I was pretty happy with how everything shook out. Yeah. Yeah. The show itself. I mean, I come away with the same uh, complaints about most of these awards shows being that they're too long. Mm-hmm. Most of the time. I mean, the Oscars lasted nearly four hours, I think above, above four hours, but yeah, I think yeah. it was too that the TV winners in particular, we've seen all these people give speeches, like as much as I love yeah. that Brunson and Jennifer Coolidge and Evan Peters are winning these awards, you know, it's just, we've seen them give this a lot of it's from the last Emmy season. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So, um, and you know, no, overall, no. it's like, it seemed like everyone there was having a good time. Yeah. Okay, like you could tell that it seems like the first true, big award ceremony kind of getting back into it for all of them so that's it did fun. feel very as normal which i think yeah. means that you know listen this wasn't as watched by people globally no. or i mean don't put it on a tuesday don't put it on a tuesday but i do think that what the globes have always done you know we can talk you know yes when they had viewers in the tens like 15 or 16 million sure mm-hmm. they would have had more impact but i think the industry there is still an awareness of the Golden Globes. I think the speeches that people gave, there is still an awareness because I think uh, more than the Golden Globes, the moments like Kiwi Kwan thanking Steven Spielberg, like that moment got shared. I'm Mm -hmm. sure, because I've seen it, when Jennifer Hudson went, Angela Bassett, baby, that moment got shared. So like, I do think that despite the lower viewership, the people who the Golden Globes usually influence, I still probably think this is influencing them because as yeah. we saw, nobody's going to miss an opportunity to go out on network television and give a speech and raise their profile. And we'll get Unless into that. Queen some Kate of the winners are benefiting from that. Some of the winners are benefiting from that, that, that those airwaves, I feel. Yeah. Yeah. I think the show did start off strong with those first two wins and two great speeches. So let's start there with supporting actor and supporting actress being he, he Kwan and Angela Bassett. I believe, did you predict Angela Bassett going into it? I did not. I know. Uh, So we, you got 10 out of 14 categories, correct? Yes. I got nine and I only got nine because I predicted Jamie Lee Curtis. I know. I know. You've been on the Bassett train the whole time too. I have. And I I will not be doubting her anytime soon now. This was the one show I was a little bit worried on, not Mm -hmm. only because it was untested, you know, we hadn't seen her win yet. And I do agree as much as I have been predicting her since July, it's still a weird, never before seen type of performance to win this type of category. Yeah. So I still was wary about it. Um, and, you know, Black Panther, if Black Panther maybe gotten into Best Picture Drama, maybe I would have then predicted her, but it only got that in song. So I was mm-hmm. a little worried about it. Um, I was very happy to see her win. I've never yeah. like jumped up and like started cheering. For, like it's, I can count on my fingers when it's happened. Um and I was very happy for Angela Bassett. So 
I do think this is good for her because it just it, it mm -hmm. cements in people's minds to take this seriously. Yeah, yeah, I feel pretty confident right now in having both of these, uh, Kihi Kwan and Angela Bassett, um, as my number ones in supporting. He went on. Really, he no. He's sweeping everywhere. Him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's maybe my favorite speech of the whole night too. Very, very emotional. Started off on a high point. Steven Spielberg call out, like you mentioned, who knows, maybe that also helps Steven Spielberg's campaign and best director <laughs> if he keeps mentioning him in all of his speeches. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, two great wins. Yeah. I do want to mention, and maybe we can get into best director, because with that speech and the fact that Steven Spielberg, I believe, I believe Angela Bassett got like half the room giving her a standing ovation, which again, I think mm -hmm. bodes well that there seems to be this respect for her. But Steven Spielberg, I think he got a full standing ovation when he got. Yeah. And I do um, wonder if there is a certain amount of and this is weird we said it during our i think sag nominations video this this mm. idea of steven spielberg as this underdog but i do wonder if it just he's done such great work that they'll look at this as our one last chance because he doesn't promise like quentin tarantino that he's only making a certain amount of movies mm. and that there just is a certain amount of reverence for him that will not be able to be competed against. I do wonder about that because I I think we were both surprised that he won. Neither of us yeah. were predicting him. Neither of us were predicting Fablements for Best Picture Drama and won those two categories. And I don't think it's out of this race. I honestly think that, as I said, I think a month ago, I think it's it's great that people are maybe predicting everything everywhere at Banshees because it means it doesn't have to hold on to that front runner status the whole time. But I do think it's still popular. Yeah, I have, we can get on to Best Director now. I have moved Steven Spielberg back to number one. It mm -hmm. feels feels right, at least right now. Um, he gave a great speech, one of the better speeches of the night, I'd say. I think that does leave a good impression. Um, and I feel like maybe we've just been doubting him as a front runner just because, like, for a long, it's been a while since um, we've had a director who's of that stature win before. I know we've had Kron recently, but he's still not like Steven Spielberg's stature. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it just feels like the Daniels, I'm not sure. I think that movie in general is very, it's not going to appeal to everyone, so I'm not sure. I feel like in our, on a preferential ballot, Spielberg is going to fare the best. And I feel like he's also got, probably if we're talking about narratives with directors, which I don't know how much that helps as much as it does with actors, but I think... He's, Spielberg has the best of the directors as well. I would um, love if yeah. Todd Field could get more into this conversation, especially he's number three, I think. Yeah, especially if Best Actress seems to be pointing in another direction, and there might not be another mm. place to honor Tar. Um, we'll talk about that. I'm I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but I do think that I think the issue that we're having with this is that we think Steven Spielberg isn't going to get it because we're unfairly comparing him to his cinematic masterpieces of legend that he's already made. And we're thinking, oh, The Fablemans doesn't match up to that. But I do think it's a movie that requires such, uh, it was such a journey for him to make. It really mm -hmm. feels that it embodies who he is as a filmmaker in a very different way than his other more epic films that he's been honored so far in the yeah. best director category, Schindler's List and Saving Private Ryan. And just from my own personal, I mean, we talked about it, I think, on some episode. Maybe we didn't. Something. I, I remember when I went with, to see this movie, I think it was my fourth time. And my friend, who's also a director, called me like a half an hour after we left and was like, do you remember this scene? Oh, my God. So I think there is a certain level of joy that this movie has. And if you want yeah. to honor the Fablemans, Steven Spielberg is like... It's the movie about him. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. That's the perfect category to honor this movie for. So I don't know. I think the Golden Globes kind of just recalibrated recal my thoughts on this now that we know that the Fablemans really has no chance of winning an acting award. Yeah, no, no chance. Michelle Williams is up in the air. Who knows what's going to happen with her? <laughs> Who but, knows? Um, we'll get to that when we talk about SAG. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I also just, I would go back to that TIFF stat. I think it's like 12 of the last 13 TIFF Audience Award winners ended up winning an above-the-line Oscar. So I feel like Fablemans should. I mean, it doesn't have to, but based on those stats, it should probably win something above the line. I do think director is its best chance. I just do wonder, is it just going to be, is it just going to win director? Which is odd. Which it happened, happened last year, but it's rare. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. it is interesting that that trend that it seems to be happening where the big budget 
technical achievement seems to be the easy snubby and then these yeah. movies that have like because that's what it is truly it's all these movies that are like second in every other category you know and mm. they just feel that it just comes together so well that they then honor the director you know it's i feel like that might be how it shakes out with the possibility yeah. because women talking seems to be falling and I'm I'm not sure about Babylon yet because the Globes love Justin Hurwitz, but of course he got he won the Globe for first won man four Globes, yeah, and then got snubbed for the oh, I don't like that word, sorry. He got omitted by the Oscars. Omission. So like, I still think that John Williams could. I mean, it's not the craziest. Maybe thing he did just recently say that he's not retiring, so he yeah. kind of killed that narrative. But yeah, yeah, which he says every time. But still, I, I never see. believe anyone when they say they're retiring. It's yeah, yeah. Except Daniel Day Lewis, I do. I I I, I don't really, know. I still I still think he could pop out at some point. Could, but I don't. He's know. got plenty um, plenty of time. I'm not holding my breath. <laughs> no, no. Um, but yeah, let's we can get into the film categories now. Speaking of Fablemans, best film drama, the Fablemans won. Um, I still don't think it'll win best picture. Personally, it doesn't seem like that kind of movie to me. I think it will do well on a preferential ballot. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it was just kind of. We all expected like the Fablemans to kind of we already thought it lost its front runner status and we all expected something like crazy to happen when it seemed like Fablemans all along is what it actually was. And maybe we should have just stuck with I think Fablemans was probably still number one on like the odds and gold derby and stuff. We just thought that this was going to be a change in like a shift in the um narrative and moment. We're all scarred of Bohemian Rhapsody, and I think that we yeah. give that win a little too much credibility because, you yeah. know, 1917, that was one of the, it was that or Parasite. Uh, 2020, I think it was Nomadland for Best Picture Drama. 2021, it was Power of the Dog. They don't go crazy all the time. And it's I usually all, it's usually the one that you don't expect. Like last year, what one last year? What would you say it was? Oh, Power Actually, of the Dog one. Power of the Dog. So that's what and I'm everyone saying. expect. Yeah, everyone expected it to be like the more um, basic pick, but they went with the more artsy pick. And then the year before, people expected it to be Trial of Chicago Seven, but it went to Nomadland. Yeah. People didn't expect. I think people probably expected Irishman the year before, and it went to 1917. So they do change narratives. It's just I think almost everyone wasn't predicting Fablemans when it was Fablemans. To be honest, I mean, I was considering it. I just didn't see it winning Best Picture Drama with no other win behind it mm -hmm. because I wasn't predicting Spielberg. It was number two in both, to be honest. Um, yeah. So, I, I, and I'm happy to see it because I, I love that movie and I'm glad it's got some awards. And I do think that, I don't know, I think it did get a little boost. I think also because yeah. it's, you wanna, it's that Banshees and Everything Everywhere that has really showed up everywhere. I think you throw yeah. those three plus Top Gun, I mean, that's your top four, and that's a very yeah. strong race there. Yeah, I agree. That is your top four. And then five yeah. is probably Tar or Elvis. Those are I your think it's then Elvis, Tar, and the next division, Avatar. And then and we can, we can talk then about that. who knows? That. Yeah. A very seven. interesting seven through ten. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Um, Speaking of Banshees of Inish Aaron, it won Best Film Comedy or Musical. I think we we both predicted this. I think um, most people went with everything everywhere. I went with Banshees because it just seemed that, I mean, first off, the Globes love Martin McDonough. They love him with three billboards. And it's, he, he seems like the kind of guy, kind of like Tarantino, where they really like his style and his writing. And it got the most nominations there, too. So it seemed like um, they would go for it. And they did, um, which makes sense. I think this movie is kind of, I don't know if it's an underdog anymore, but it's been sneaky throughout the whole season like sneakily at most people's like number two number three maybe number four but i do think i am considering making it my number one in best picture i think this i don't know do I, very well i don't think it's as divisive ballot. as people say it is i know people say it's like like uh depressing or like um some people might not like like it's dark but it doesn't seem like it seems like most people like it even if the ending's not like the happiest so okay here's the thing Everything Everywhere, as much as people love it, and it will get a lot of number one votes, it's going to get a lot of number 10 votes, I feel. I, there yeah. are going to be some people that just don't get it. They're going to turn it off halfway through. The same people who described Get Out and Black Panther as like the ooze that comes outside of fast food. Yeah, I mean... Like, what are the direct quotes from the blind Oscar? Kiron and... Yeah, Kiron and Del Toro were... I think they had a, an interview recently mm -hmm. to 
together and I, I saw a quote from it where they were talking about everything everywhere and they were talking about it as like a film of this younger generation but the way they were speaking about it was almost like they didn't quite get it so mm-hmm. I'm not sure I, I think with older academy members in particular I don't think it'll be their kind of thing I think they might appreciate it but I think it would rank lower on their ballot yeah. whereas I think so Banshees then... and Fablemans would be consistently in the top five yeah. whereas everything everywhere is very, uh, gonna be everywhere yeah, so it's it's interesting. I mean, we we'll get to SAG and the yeah. strong showing that Banshees and everything everywhere had. Um, but yes, it, it's I just Banshees just seems that type of movie that is maybe inoffensive in a way, as is Fablemans. I do think that Fablemans is a movie that is go. I think the anti-Semitism that's been unfortunately popular in, yeah. at least in the you know whether it's Kanye West or all these you know unfortunate things that are coming up recently I think is helping it is in giving it a currency um right now in the current um and then I do think that it's a movie that's not I mean everybody's had a family everybody's yeah. been in those sort of situations I think everything everywhere has the potential of really isolating its viewers and and no and not again as we said not getting to the end um i but i was not surprised they didn't win the globe for best picture i mean the three billboards yeah. were here they love mark mcdonald so yeah speaking of which we can quickly talk about screenplay which also won here um i feel like everyone's kind of predicting that i think even if everything everywhere even wins picture i still think banshees will probably win best original screenplay it seems oh, yeah. i'm pretty confident in that I know well, during the ceremony, it'll happen before Best Picture and Banshees will win screenplay and everyone's going to be like, Banshees is winning picture now. But. I mean, as wholly original as Everything Everywhere is, it's still an action movie. And I would be pretty shocked mm-hmm. if an action movie won a screenplay award. It's like a musical winning a screenplay award. So yeah. Banshees is just such a sharp, you know, succinct written dramedy that I think it, I feel very confident about it winning Best Original Screenplay. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we went over director. Uh, probably the biggest surprise of the night, best non-English language film, went to Argentina 1985 instead of, I think people were expecting either RR or All Quiet on the Western Front. Um, I would probably have ranked it number five on Gold Derby. I think I probably I did. did. I didn't, ranked number I five didn't, ex- on Gold I didn't expect it at all, but I mean, it's a nice surprise. I think this pretty much solidifies, I mean, not completely, but I think I would definitely have it in your Oscar five predictions now. Um, I've had That's it at my good. number five. Yeah, I've had it at my number five. I bumped it up to number four now. Um, Yeah, I mean, it's a nice boost for the movie. I don't think it changes in terms of, I don't think it's going to end up winning the Oscar, but I do think it definitely makes it much stronger. Mm -hmm. We talked about original score, which um, Babylon could benefit from this if Women Talking is faltering. It's Um, an interesting category because there's not like, I know Babylon's the front runner right now, but there's not like a clear front runner. Like if Babylon misses picture, it could kind of end up like first man where it just mm-hmm. like ends up losing buzz and it doesn't end up winning it. Yeah. But I don't, is the alternate women talking, which is also losing buzz. I get it. Like it's, it's, the, yeah. It's seen, I think that's your top three. I would throw Banshees in there at four. And then and I Pinocchio. think it's, a, it's Pinocchio or Black Panther then for five. Um, I think Pinocchio is getting in there. I would have Banshees as my number five personally. But I, I think, no, I, I think they love Carter Burwell because he got in for three billboards. Yeah. So I would, you know, put that in. I just tend to go with the movie that more people have seen. And I think mm-hmm. based on the Producers Guild, Black Panther has a higher profile. And he won this category for the first one. So he did. He did. Um, I, but I think it, it's a race. It's going to be Despla versus uh, Gore. They do and love Despla. And they Speaking don't like Black sequels Panther, in score. What? Sorry. They don't like sequels usually in score also. Unless Except Star Wars. Her name is yeah, John Star Williams, Wars. where yeah, he gets every Wars. nomination for every episode. Rise of Skywalker, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, it's John Williams. He's one of the greatest musical yeah. minds of all time. He deserves any award. Yeah. Uh speaking of Black Panther and music, let's talk about the original song, which went to Natu Natu. Yes. Rihanna. Um, I think this does change the Oscar race. I, I have this as number one now. Do you think it up? Because I think RRR benefited from the fact that they also nominated it for best. What's the foreign language film? Non English language. language, whatever the I don't know what, title is. For the Golden Globes. Yeah. It's different than the Oscars, I think. Yeah. Um, but they RRR was nominated there. It will not be for 
the Oscars, be, yeah. and I think it's very unlikely that it gets another nomination. So no, it's just song. that's, I think, the the difference here. Um, I did do the research. The Golden Globes usually pick the Oscar winner. They but, do, yeah. Uh, one of their biggest uh, disruptions with that history is they did not pick Let It Go from Frozen. Oh, um, what they what they pick? They picked um, the Bono song from Mandela, Long Walk to Freedom. Okay. Um, so I, they don't always go. Like, I just looked at that because I just thought that was such a, like, how did you not pick Let It Wild. Go? I remember yeah. that night. It was, I was a very sad 11-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> or um, Let It Go. It's okay. Yeah. It won the Oscar. I know. It's cool. So anyway, so it's, it's possible. I think it definitely helped. And he gave a great speech. Um, mm -hmm. But I... Again, I just I don't know if this movie I just have the time to the Oscars will have the same profile that it needs. I don't see the passion or the motivation or even like the narrative. I mean, I see it behind um Rihanna's song, but I just don't really see the passion for either of the songs, to be honest. Hold my hand or lift me up. I know they're they're both good songs, but I don't I, feel a lot of like need to because I think Black Panther is going to be honored with Angela Bassett. Top Gun will be honored in plenty of tech categories. And this is the place. I think there are a lot of Academy members who have seen RRR. And if they want to honor it, this is going to be their only place to do it. Um, and awesome. it's, If you listen to all the songs, I think it's easily the best, in my opinion. Um, the catchiest, I think it'll be the one if they listen to all the songs, which all you, if you're voting on it, all you the bare minimum you need to do is just listen to the five songs mm -hmm. i think it will be the one that gets stuck in their head the most it's, i mean it's still stuck in my head i mean i thought that with husevic and then look what wins yeah but how many people are watching eurovision a song of ice and fire or whatever but i think but a I'm lot of saying, people are the watching song that is the most integral to the movie it belongs to and is probably the most catchy doesn't always win and i posit you this who is going to have a big high profile Super Bowl halftime show right when That's Oscar true. voting is happening. And well, she Oscar voting just started today. When does well, it for the nominations, not for the for the no Oh yeah, for the yeah, she'll get nominated. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just yeah, saying that's, that will help her. She's gonna. She's my she's my number two. I yeah. just I feel I feel the passion for R, which is why I'm going with it for now. I definitely but, feel yeah. the passion. I'm just wondering whether the passion then translates into Oscar attention. Um, yeah, yeah. We'll see um i think that's it for the tech categories yeah the so tech. Tech, the very yeah. small tech for the gold they don't gold. really do tech um they, right. they do the ones that bring the stars um so let's talk the about major it. acting categories let's get, yes let's get to the four butler the blanchett yo farrell i think we all expected it those are i think personally those are your top two in both the acting races actor and actress um, I still, I, we'll talk about the whale in a second. And when we get to PGA, I, I still, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared personally. But You're scared. <laughs> I'm scared of the whale. Um, and I thought, I thought we were free from it, but it's, it's returning. Um, but yeah, um, right. Golden Globes. Yeah. So to quote Quentin Tarantino, "Hate Blad uh, yeah. yet was not there." Which gave all the room. Did you see her all... reaction at the UK Sorry. premiere? Oh, I have a fourth Golden Globe. I have that many. Right. Wow, they're probably Listen, in a box. She box. doesn't have to lift a finger, and she can still win yeah. this. Because again, as I said, I do think that there's good everything everywhere. At the is Oscars. Covered. Yes. Oh, I still have her winning. Yeah. Yeah, everything everywhere is covered. It's got Ki Hu Kwan. He's they're good, um, yeah. and they may want to be a concerted effort to give Tar something. And as I said, Steven Spielberg is as much responsible for the Fablemans being what it is as Kate Blanchett is for Tar. It's a, they're very yep. worthy representative winners for the films overall. Um, I do think though that Michelle Yeoh gave a great speech. She did. She didn't have any competition as far as from Kate Blanchett. And we've talked about it. SAG, I think is a very possible possibility for yeah. Michelle Yeoh. I think she and, probably will. And I do think there seems, I'm getting the sense that people are seeing this as like the one-time opportunity to give it to Michelle Yeoh and Kate Blanchett has done this before. And even though Kate Blanchett gives the best performance in my favorite movie of the year, I do wonder if there just seems to be this growing support for this type, this type of Jennifer Coolidge moment for Michelle Yeoh. Yeah, she she gave a really good speech. I think if you're going to vote solely for narrative, the people who do vote mostly for narrative, 
I think Michelle Yeoh has a stronger narrative than Kate Blanchett. I do think in terms of performance, they both gave great performances. I, I would lean more towards Kate Blanchett. Um, I do think Yeoh will probably win SAG because SAG is more populist and they clearly liked everything ever all at once a lot. Yeah. Um, I think this, Blanchett will win BAFTA. And I think this, we'll could be be, this could be Bozeman Hopkins. This could be the more popular yeah. once in a lifetime opportunity choice that everybody's kind of predicting, yeah, then, predicting, yeah. and then Anthony Hopkins just salsas in there, and yeah. it's like he does on Twitter, and just because you know people vote for the one they really do love, and so I, I don't know if I'm ready. I think I did move Michelle Yeoh up in my predictions, but it's really it's a close great. race. It's a really yeah. close race. It's if the there's closest best actress race, I think we've seen yeah. even more than 2020. If there's any acting race in recent memory that I've wanted a tie to finally return to the Oscars, it would be this one. I I, yeah. I really just want to see both of them win. And imagine the speech if they both like got up there together. I mean, that would be great. Yeah. Um, I'm leaving Blanchett still, but I think I mean it's between those two. Then mm-hmm. we'll talk about who the other three are when we get to SAG. Yeah. Um, I'm I might be leaving Blanchett because the more I think about it, the more like there is such love for Tar, and they're gonna want to give it something. So, yeah. yeah, it's it's difficult. It really is because you do have. And if like everything everywhere year, two acting awards that doesn't yeah. happen a lot i mean it happened with three billboards i could see a similar three billboards-esque path for mm-hmm. um everything everywhere um but i mean yeah i don't think everything ever won screenplay three billboards got two acting awards i mean it's possible didn't win picture um, um let's talk about this yeah. actor where we do feel very strongly about the, the other person um oh I'm, yeah you have feral yeah i have feral i think this is banshees i think is a little bit more beloved than elvis um i do yeah. think that unfortunately and our thoughts and prayers to lisa marie presley and her family yes. but i do think that Project. elvis will be on the minds of people um i think very similarly to how a lot of people were watching probably at an increased volume watching ma rainey's black bottom because of chadwick's passing and defy bloods um i do think you might see that happen um but of course that is secondary that is completely has nothing to do with what should be, which is the thoughts and prayers to their family. Um, but I mean, he did thank her. It was a wonderful thing to see just her two days before at there celebrating her dad. So it's very sad. It's very sad. But, um, you know, I do think Elvis and Banshees, they're both beloved. Elvis, of course, now having a little bit more substance to it, unfortunately. Um, but I do think Banshees is loved. And I do think Colin Farrell has put in the work. He's in a great movie. He is the heart of the movie. He goes on this very unexpected path. He gave a great speech. And I just think that at th- there, this might be the time to give Colin Farrell his due. Um, but I know you disagree. Yeah, I have Austin Butler still. I, yeah, I think they're, Colin Farrell's a, clo- a close number too. But I don't know. I just feel like if, that just doesn't seem personally to me like, an Oscar winning performance. It's probably some of the best work of his career. It's just when you look at the stuff that they love, they love when you play a real life person. They love when you transform and Austin Butler through makeup does transform throughout. He sings, he really does everything that they love in terms of Oscar performances. I think his Banshees is a little bit stronger overall. Um, But Elvis is, I think still a pretty strong film. Um, Yeah. I mean, I've, I've had Butler all season. I think it just makes the most sense to me. And I think, in terms of where they're going to win, I think, honestly, I could see Austin going the Will Smith route in terms of, like, people even thought at BAFTAs, like, that Benedict Cumberbatch was going to be competitive um, and that he was closer to um, Smith than he actually was. I, I could honestly see, because the BAFTAs with the long list really liked Elvis. I could see Butler winning there and just kind of, like, cementing, like, yeah, he's, he's the clear winner. I do grant you that... Austin Butler's performance does fit more in line with the past winners of this category as far as Joaquin Phoenix and Gary Oldman and um, Leonardo DiCaprio and The Revenant. Like you see those type of side by side, like this is the type of performance they honor. I do think, though, that you look at something like the year of 2016 when you had Casey Affleck and Denzel Washington in Fences. And Denzel Washington is one of the biggest movie stars of all time, two Academy Awards already. And despite that, and maybe despite a win at SAG, which I think that's still a race there, and I have it leaning Colin Farrell. For um, SAG? For SAG. 
Oh, I'd uh, have I'd have Farrell honestly number three. I think Frazier has a decent shot at sack, really? but I would have I think Butler's gonna get that pretty easily. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, listen, the thing about Banshees is that Colin Farrell could win in two places. So that's possible because Redmond Frazier mm -hmm. and Austin Butler can only win once. Um, so that's possible. But I still yeah. think that you look at that year, despite Denzel winning SAG, and despite him being in the bigger performance, the quieter performance that is the 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 center of that movie that is higher up because I do think that when it came to that year, it was Moonlight, La La Land, Manchester. So I just see, I see that type of situation happening. Yeah, I could see that too. I just, I've been on the Austin train all along. And yes. It's like you asking me to leave Angela. I understand. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've joined you on Angela and soon enough you'll join me on Austin, you know, once he <laughs> wins SAG and we'll get to Critics' Choice, but Critics' Choice and all that stuff. But yeah, that's really it for the Golden Globes. Any other Golden Globes thoughts before we move on to SAG? Um, I'm just going over my head. I think we did all, I mean, animated feature, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Yeah. That seems to be mm -hmm. the constant for Clear. this season. This yeah. the one last thing about Farrell is that I believe Colin Farrell has been winning to the same degree the critics' prizes as much as Kate Blanchett and as much as Ki Wei Kwan. So like, yeah, he's been. Winning I I that. would just say I I get it that maybe they're different voting bodies, but I don't think they're going to branch off. That there seems to be a like those three seem to be in a very. I do think Benedict good Cumberbatch place. was winning a lot of critics. Yeah, awards for lead actor too. That's true. Um, it just so far we only have one show to go on, and those three yeah. people won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's it for the Golden Globe SAG nominations. Came out recently. Prov provided a little more chaos than the Globes usually do. Um, so if you were in hunger of chaos, you got it the next day. Um, <laughs> we can go over those. Let's, let's start off with ensemble, where our nominees were. Babylon. I'm doing this off the top of my head. Banshees. Everything ever all at once. The Fablemans and um. Women talking. Uh, women talking. Women talking. A nice surprise. Um, yeah, this is this is crazy because women talking in Babylon, everyone was like, okay, they're kind of done. I don't think I had, like some people probably were, but most people weren't really predicting them here, especially in ensemble. And now oh, they yeah. suddenly have a surge of support, at least in ensemble from the actors on in the individual categories. But yeah, what are your thoughts on this? It's rare for SAG to get five for five in terms of five of their ensemble films getting into Best Picture. That rarely happens. So. Yeah, usually I think it's like four out of five. Usually it's three or four. Yeah. Three to four. Um, yeah. Tricky. It is tricky. Well, first off, let's mention the fact that Banshees of Inishirin's ensemble are the four people who got nominated individually. That is yeah. crazy. That just shows it's you strong. an incredible amount of support. And I think for all the people who are predicting everything everywhere, that's, that's, listen, I might be predicting it. I think it's a very strong contender here. I would not count out Banshees. I mean, Mark McDonough's Three Billboards won yeah. this category in 2017. It could be the same thing. Um, so, I mean, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. I want to just throw this out there. Banshees of Inishirin had a very similar Golden Globes night to Three Billboards, only losing yeah. the supporting performance, which in this case, you could argue either went to Kihue Kwan or Angela Bassa, whichever one you thought was the bigger contender. Yeah. I don't, as much as I want Angela Bassett to win, and I think she could, I do, I still will put pause on the fact that it's a Marvel movie. It's a very unlikely type of performance. Carrie Condon could win the BAFTA and use that momentum to win. If mm -hmm. Colin Farrell then does what I think he will and win Best Actor, and then let's say then they want to honor everything everywhere in screenplay or tar in screenplay, you could see mm -hmm. Banshees win yeah. the SAG ensemble, maybe win an individual acting award, and then end up only winning two Oscars and it be two performances. Yeah. You could see a three billboards route for this movie, I think. Yeah, that's that's possible. I, I honestly I'm thinking about maybe making Banshees my ensemble winner here just because I don't have it winning any individual acting categories. So maybe that is where they would want to honor it. I'm still leaning everything everywhere. But um yeah, I mean SAC has been especially ensemble very helpful in terms of the Oscar race recently. I mean, that was kind of the start of Coda, really. It was the start of Jessica Chastain. Start of Jessica Chastain, yeah, because the actors are the biggest branch, so you can't really, can't doubt them in terms of the influence they have over who ends up winning. So, especially who wins here, we'll have to pay a lot of attention. I do think, though, if we get to a situation at SAG where Colin Farrell doesn't win Best Actor, but Banshees win Best Ensemble, we've learned nothing. I then think we yeah. go to BAFTA, 
and we see what happens. Um, because I do think that what could end up happening is what you just said. If they feel that Colin Farrell or Brendan Fraser, uh, Brendan Fraser or Austin Butler, this is the only chance to not to give them an award and give mm-hmm. them a movie that an award. And they both seem, I mean, Elvis is definitely a popular movie. The whale seems to be more popular yeah. than we were anticipating. At least with uh, producers. Yeah. So, but still overall, um, you know, it did have one of the best per theater averages of the year. So yeah, I, I do think though, but if, if it wins best ensemble, then we've learned nothing and we have to then turn to BAFTA or maybe critics choice. I mean, but I, I would think the critics they might just fall in line with Colin Farrell because every critics group has been falling in line with Colin Farrell. Well, it's they, they more than any other critics group try to predict the Oscars. Um, so I mean we'll get to it in a little bit. I, I, I mean, would think I don't that know they if they're would... trying to predict. I think their picks end up coinciding. I think with... they like I think they like being able to say that they um have the best correlation in terms of who ends up winning the yeah. Oscar. I think they like Maybe. that. Um but yeah, there's some there are some times where that isn't the case. But yeah. um yeah, I think Farrell will win that. And or not Farrell, not Farrell. I think Butler will win that. And um, so Farrell will now win comes that. the time. Where I ask you, who's that fifth spot? Because I don't think it's going to be Adam Sandler. Oh, and Best Actor? Yeah. It's the guy I've been telling you about all along. It's Paul Mescal. I am leaning in that direction. I was toying with Jeremy Pope. And I I also think that Gabriel LaBelle could come out of nowhere and surprise. If If the the Fablemans is very strong, yes. I just think think he's being very forgotten, sadly. I think he's the best performance in that film, but I think he's being very overlooked and forgotten. Yeah. Because it's Steven do, Spielberg's narrative, and he is Steven Spielberg. Yeah. I do think, though, that what the Paul Mescal casting news of recent has been helping him. And I do yeah. think that... Richard Linklater, Gladiator. Yeah. He's going to do BAFTA, well at BAFTAs. BAFTA could help him. It seems as if his profile is getting raised enough that he could stand there alone with After Sun. I think so. I just don't know what else it could be, honestly. Like, I know Tom Cruise, but he's really missed everything he's needed to. I think there's a clear showing of we like this movie overall, but the acting is not something that's standing out or yeah, worth honoring. The, the joke that Gerard Carmichael made at, at his expense, which yeah. you can debate the merits of the award and whatever, but I do think it just speaks to the fact that there are a lot of people who, as much as they love Top Gun, may have an issue nominating Tom Cruise individually. Yeah. That may just yeah. end up being what that means. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. But I, I might be leaning Paul Mescal. But I also think Jeremy Pope. I mean, I do think Ryan Murphy's speech, if people watch yeah. it, gave him a nice boost. I mean, he called him the future. Yeah. So, I just, I do I do think more people will have seen After Sun than will have seen um, The Inspection. But if you've seen both movies... I would say Jeremy Pope's performance is a little more Oscar baity. Um, Paul Mescal's performance would kind of like be a triumph in terms of what the Oscars nominate. It's very, very, very internal, very um, we'll nuanced. Uh, like his big, like there's an emotional scene and you don't even see his face during it. So it's um, it's it, I would love to see him nominated. It's probably my my favorite of the lead acting performances this year. But would you then argue that out of the movies that they're already seeing? that Gabriel LaBelle has the best shot to get in. Well, do you think, are you counting After Sun as a movie they haven't seen? I'm I'm just, as far as like the, the actual top contenders, the best picture contenders. Like, Out of the picture contenders, do you yeah. think? Let me ask you this. Do you think Gabriel LaBelle has a better shot than Tom Cruise? Mm-hmm. As somebody who's so anti-Tom Cruise. I'd like to say yes. I'd say they're around the same level, to be honest, in the top 10. I think they'd probably be like eight and nine. Because I am looking for like, where's that J.K. Simmons? Where's this nomination that comes out of nowhere? Um, I I think I may have one of those, but we, we can we can talk about it in SAC. We really kind of covered actor already. I mean, the top four, lock in those top four with yeah. Butler, Farrell, Frazier, Nighy. I mean, if Nighy gets in that SAC, he's getting in everywhere. Oh, yeah. Um, and then Sandler, he could, not, he could win BAFTA. That's the other thing we need to look out. He for. could, he could, yeah. I think he, it's yeah, probably him or or Farrell or Butler. I think it's competitive over there. I do um, think that we could get a situation where, let's say, Farrell wins ensemble so that he's not winning Best Actor, um, and let's say Frazier wins the SAG. 
Nye wins or Farrell win with the hometown advantage win the BAFTA. Butler, and if he doesn't win the Critics' Choice, then Butler will only have the Golden Globe to stand on. Yeah, I just don't see that happening personally. But you think you he'll know, pick up? One? I think he'll get Critics' Choice, and I think he'll get SAG. And I think there's a, a chance he gets BAFTA. Okay, it's possible. I'm, I'm Again, still very like confident. I said, as much as this has nothing to do with this the season, I do think there might be just a little bit more you know let's turn i already saw it people are now watching elvis again and that may help him right at the time that he needs that little support you know unfortunately yeah the- i think everyone's already seen elvis um yeah. i think everyone already loves him in his performance um yeah but, but it's seeing it again i think you win because people watch you a second time i feel when it comes to performances yeah yeah probably um and yeah our number five there was sandler um which i think you had um I, I had him for yeah. SAG, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's yeah, it's kind of a SAG kind of thing um, mm-hmm. for Sandler. He's a star. He's been doing a lot of campaigning. He's been on like every round table I've seen. <laughs> um, so he's doing the campaigning. I He might be number six, but it's rare for them to go five for five. Although in this specific category, the last two years they have. Um, I just, I don't know if Adam Sandler's first Oscar nomination will be for Hustle. That'd um, be... Pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. For a June Netflix release in a sports yeah. movie. That'd be pretty that that would be a feat. Um, Maybe if SAG was already on Netflix, if like this was a few years into the deal. Um supporting actress and supporting actor. We I mean we've talked about these in our SAG reaction videos. I feel like generally what we expected, Eddie Redmayne seems to be yeah. Uh, I have a question for you in terms of supporting actor. So there mm-hmm. it was Dan O'Gleason, Keegan, Quan, and Redmayne. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's the five at the Oscars? I think the one you take out is obviously Redmayne. But who, I took out I Redmayne and I threw in Tom Hanks. Because you I think, for the Oscars. Because, yeah, because I think Tom Hanks feels like that J.K. Simmons type of nomination. That, like, the yeah. actor we love who's won an Oscar, he's won two, not recently. I have but. a similar thing in that fifth spot. I have Brad Pitt still getting in there because... Usually, most times there has to be at one at least one movie or performance in here whose movie isn't in Best Picture. I mean, it's happened before, but it's pretty rare. As so you just have one out of your Best Picture. I have it missing picture just barely, mm-hmm. but I have him being the performance that still sneaks in when the film's not. Which, I mean, I don't, I don't not understand it. I do think it would be interesting though that he gets in and Margot Robbie does it. Um, yeah, I mean, he's a bigger star as we saw at. The Golden Globes. I think everyone just he was even despite everything, front, it was very clear. Yeah, he he was given the golden seat, but I think even despite all the stuff floating around him, um, mm-hmm. everyone seems to still like him. So I don't think that really is going to take him down. And he gives one of his better performances in the movie. It's um, possible he would probably be my six. Um, and I'm just betting on Elvis overperforming, which I think it's a high that I have a better chance of that happening than Babylon overperforming. Um, yeah. No, yeah, that's true. It's just, yeah. I know we, this happens. I we can talk about that too. Um, there's at least one nomination in the last few years per season who someone gets in without having hit like any precursors. I know last year it was Judy Dench and Penelope Cruz. Before that, I forget who it was. There Judy was Dench was not before. nominated. Nowhere. Yeah. Really? Well, well, the other thing too is that I will. I, Brad Pitt did get nominated for the ensemble with SAG, where Tom Hanks wasn't. He did, was neither, and I'm sure Judy Dench got nominated with the ensemble so you could argue that they did get up yeah not individual not even if it yeah. wasn't individually but um, who do you think that would be this year what someone who just someone who sneaks in without having hit any precursors well in supporting actor i think it's tom hanks um and then maybe look i'll say it for you brian tyree henry even though i don't think it's oh my god i would love that i don't think that's happening either um for um, supporting yeah. actress i maintain it's nina haas Okay, I've given up on that. If she I missed don't BAFTA. want to. She's my Paul Mescal. <laughs> yeah, I I can get that. Yeah, I I have my answer for it is also in supporting actress, which I don't really consider Critics Choice a precursor, but I guess you could. Um, I think Jesse Buckley is still going to surprise in supporting actress. I think Women Talking, which I have it still in picture, but she got in at Critics Choice, and, didn't? Yeah, I I just said I don't I don't consider it a precursor. Choice. Nothing, no precursors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, barely no precursors. How about that? She'd still be a surprise. So I'll qualify her as a surprise. Um, but yeah, in terms of supporting actors here, it was it was a pretty good lineup. They had Bassett, Chow, Condon, Curtis, Sue, or Shu. Um, yeah, 
So I think Chow think... is probably getting in there now. Who? Hong Chow. I agree. I think Hong Chow. The is... whale is pretty strong. We're gonna get to producers guild in a second. Let me ask you now, Stephanie Shu. Do you think that's happening? Uh, I'm conflicted because then if I have Chow getting in, and then I also have Shu getting in, that's five for five. Um, in terms of categories that could go five for five here, I would say supporting actress is the most likely to. So let's um, talk about it. Let's talk about it. I saw that's where a I have of places. Buckley. I talked solid on Variety today. What to do with Michelle Williams, who did not get nominated oh God, yeah. for Best Actress at SAG. Um, she was nominated with the ensemble, of course, for Fablemans. Variety is currently predicting her for Best Supporting Actress. And mm -hmm. I think if enough people get the word to nominate her in this category, I do think that she could get in. What do you I think? Just, I think it's more likely that the votes split because we've had months of this season where she's been clearly established as a lead and she's been clearly yeah. campaigned as a lead. I think it's more likely that if there's like a last minute surge for like putting her in supporting because people do forget when a lot of these other ceremonies, mm -hmm. they campaign and like they tell you like they specifically have like you're you have to vote for specific actors in their specific category. In the Oscars, you can just write them in. That's what happened with Lakeith Stanfield. It's not like you have to vote for him and lead. You can vote for him in support if you want to. Yeah. Um. So it could happen. I just honestly think, honestly think it's more likely that she splits votes and misses both than she ends up in supporting. I am worrying that's going to happen to her. I do think though that she has a stronger chance with the Academy than SAG. And I, I don't know if Ana de Armas is something we ask like. When was the last time an NC-17 movie got an Academy Award nomination? That was NC-17? I thought it was just R. Oh, I thought it was yeah, about to be NC-17. Oh. So okay. I do wonder what that means for the Academy. But at the same time, she said like Carroll everything she needed. To. Started his speech by talking for like twenty seconds about how much he loved Donna Darma. So I do cried himself to sleep. Yeah. Um. So. But yeah, in terms of Shu in supporting actress, sadly, I would have her missing. Even though SAG is really who's gonna like the actors are really gonna who's gonna decide who gets nominated here. Um. I also I think the Banshees boys are pretty clearly established double they're, nominee they're in, in the supporting categories. In. I'll bet everything now. They're both in. Yeah, I just I don't know. It probably has happened before, but I can't recall the last time that we've had two double supporting nominations in both categories. I think it's we been a while. Had... It's it was recent, I feel. Let me look oh, up. Oh really? I feel like um, it was. Maybe not. Maybe I'm conflating things. But I think we got the clear three there of Bassett, um, Hunton, and Curtis. Honestly, I could see Curtis missing come Oscar morning. I think that could be a, a fun omission. Um she could be a but... Jennifer Lopez. Yeah. Yeah. Where everybody has her like in the runner-up position and then no one's good i don't think i don't think that's a passion pick like i don't I, maybe but i don't see many people being like jamie lee curtis is my number one in supporting actress that's a career award oh it's totally career um yeah. though she's very good in everything everywhere and she's, she's doing great campaigning yeah i mean you see her reaction to michelle yo winning she's a very supportive <laughs> member of the cast that's for sure um, and she's hollywood royalty you she know, is like yeah I, I still have her getting in. I just, out of those three, I think she is the most likely to miss. Um, I do think it is down to Bastion Condon. Uh, and then I do have Hong Chao getting in just because, like we said, the whale is strong. Um, just, I mean, the actors seem to like it as well as producers. Um, I think it'll probably get in there. So I I think it's down to Shu. I think Dolly DeLeon still stands a chance. I think BAFTA could really go for her. And then... Then one of the women talking actresses, I would lead in Buckley. And I think that's really it. I don't really think anyone else who's in contention for that. I think Mulligan is done. Um, so, yeah, I think it's those three fighting for the last spot. Then actress here, as we mentioned, Michelle Williams missed for um, Blanchett, Davis, DeArmas, Deadweiler, and Yo. Um, yeah, I think it hasn't think happened recently where we had two and it's both. It's been a it while. Was... It probably has happened before, but. We were thinking it could happen if all four Belfast people got in. Um, yeah. But, um, but yeah, that didn't Alf happen. Alf and Thorn and Mist, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I think uh, talking about actress, I think I have to arm is getting in there personally. I also, this was great for Deadweiler. I, I think lots of people thought she was going to miss. But um, it is, I think it's a performance that if you've seen it, yeah, you're, I think that's a passion pick. I think you're going to put it pretty highly. Um, Do we seems think... like they've seen it. Who do, who, would you put five? who would you put at 
five or six? Like who out of the SAG people, who do you think is the least likely to get the Oscar nomination out of those five? Viola Davis. I Viola. see. I agree. I think Anna de Armas yeah. has risen above her. I think given I that, don't have Viola Davis getting the Oscar nomination right now. Do you have Michelle Williams? I have Michelle Williams. Yeah. She's my I, number five. I feel like that might happen. Again, it's the question of whether they she ends up splitting because now people are like, put her in supporting. Um, yeah. And there is someone every year, pretty much every year, I mean, Lady Gaga last year, who hits like every precursor you need and then still Oscar morning, you still end up missing income nomination. And it's just the Women King. I mean, it's really not getting anything. No it SAG Ensemble and Producers Guild. And it's not doing well at the guilds in general, like makeup, costumes. It's not doing great in terms of any of that stuff so i do think the movie's losing a lot of buzz and i think therefore viola is losing some steam so she i would have her missing yeah. then i would have yo blanchett um de Armis, um who am i forgetting deadweiler and um williams right now yeah i i think i think i agree i i'm pretty sure i agree with that i just wanted to bring it up now that it seems that you know one of the major trades is talking about michelle williams and supporting i'm like all right what are we we're in crazy town yeah yeah <laughs> I think the Le- the Lakeith Stanfield thing was kind of like a one, a one time. S- it's like a rare thing. I don't think that's something you can like expect to happen. I, that, at least I personally wouldn't be predicting that sort of thing. Yes. Um, um shall we yeah. venture into PGA where all hell let's, is broken? <laughs> let's do it. Um we've got the top seven, everyone's top seven. That's how obviously getting in there. We got everything everywhere, we got Top Gun, we got Avatar, we got Elvis, we've got Banshees, we've got Tar, and we've got what am I missing? Fablements. Um, Fablements, yeah. Those seven obviously getting into the Oscars. The three here throw surprises, I guess. Um Glass Onion, I expected that to get in though. Um Black Panther and the Whale. Usually they go I think their accuracy rate, someone said is like eight point eight percent. So usually you would expect at least eight of these to get in. Um, they have gone seven out of ten before. I'm sure they've gone lower than that as well, but they're pretty accurate. The producers, um, the whale. I don't. I still have it missing. I think this this could be like a being the Ricardos sort of thing. It ends up at PGA, gets everything you need, but it, then it come the Oscar morning, it still misses picture, but it gets an uh, lead acting and a supporting. Well, it's going to get two acting awards now. And it's, gonna get, it's in hot contention to win screenplay and makeup. I mean, that's four nominations without picture. For but being like the that, that's pretty good. Yeah, I, I, I see the comparison and I I, I think that's the pop. Also, that's a divisive possible. fish film. Um, yeah, but as I've said, divisive also, not means a good that people film. are talking about you and you need to be talked about. Um so I felt I feel like it's a much more of a possibility. And there's more passion for the whale than I think there was for being the Ricardos, to be honest. Being the yeah. Ricardos was kind of very down the down the middle, mediocre so, at best. And listen, you've always said actor makeup combo. That could yeah. be Brendan Fraser. Which speaking of Darmus, I do think I have Blonde now getting into makeup, which I think boosts her actress chances as well. It's doing well at the makeup like nomination places, and they lo- they love when you look like a real life person. Yeah. So. So it's, it's, listen, I might put the whale in for best picture now. I'm tempted, but I'm just out of morals and just like, I just <laughs> physically can't listen, do it. But everybody watches this channel knows where we stand on this movie. We are not a big fan. It could win screenplay. Don't speak that into the universe. If, if, just saying. if the whale wins screenplay over anything in that category, but in particular, women talking, the front runner for the whole season. I will, I'll just like quit at life. And... All right. Well, let's balance this out. Well, let's talk about something I'm happy about, which is Black Panther. Um, yeah. I think this, I think this is in. Is that, is that I crazy put it in. To say? I put it in now. I got it at Gold Derby once again with uh, 101 odds. Yeah. And if they do, not that the movie isn't worthy, because I, as again, if you watch this channel, you know, it was one of my top 10 favorite movies of the year. And I love this movie. Yeah. This is a remarkable campaign. They did yeah. everything right. If they were, if they were able to get a best picture nomination for a Marvel sequel, mm-hmm. this campaign should be studied. Yeah, I mean, most of the ads were for Angela Bassett, but I do think honestly, Angela Bassett's strength in that category has helped the film overall. Yeah. I mean, just when you look at it on paper, it's going to get what like five tech nominations and an acting win. When is a film that gets that many nominations and like an above the line win? 
not in best picture like that's pretty pretty rare and it represents yeah and it represents something different as far as what the achievement of this film was and it was well seen it was you know it's made 800 million dollars in the worldwide box office it's one of the top three i believe domestic grocers of the year maybe top five you know and And i I think it's top three i think it's that would be so weird when was the last when also was the last time the academy nominated the three highest grossing films of the year yeah is it domestically top Avatar, black panther i'll i'll double check that but i just it just seems as if the producers guild you know you have all this technical craft you have this representation this new representation with uh namor and his um Mm -hmm. colony underwater that is another step forward i think a lot of people respect angela bassett a lot of people respect ryan coogler i remember showing you like around opening weekend time back in november i mean she shouted him out in her speech and he got applause yeah yeah so i i I just think this movie is it's hitting again. I I think the apprehension is because it's just so uncommon that Marvel would be able to do this lightning strikes twice again. But... And it's also just the fact that there's already two sequels pretty much locked in for a picture. Yeah. And it's there haven't been many sequels nominated in picture in general overall in the history of the Oscars and to have three in one year would be insane. But I think that also insane. just speaks to the kind of year that we've had. It speaks it's to where the industry is, and yeah. I, it helps that Black Panther, at least, is the most different as far as what people are nominating it for. And I also think that I do, like, if you go back and watch Angela Bassett when she won, not mm-hmm. saying that the, these were the only people giving her standing ovations, but Billy Porter gave her a standing ovation. Coleman Domingo gave her a standing ovation. The Abbott Elementary table gave her a standing ovation. Ovation. I do think that there's a certain there's a lot of respect. Of, there's a lot of respect among the black community for this movie, what it represents for them, and I do think that those voters are not going to fall in line with Avatar. They're not going to fall in line with Top Gun. They're going to put their support towards this blockbuster. Um, yeah. I do think that we shouldn't discount that we're going to need. I mean, we want. We need some variety as far as who I know everything everywhere is a diverse film. That's more of um yeah. I, I would also say Black Panther and for that specific community. That's yeah. really the only I know Woman King's kind of died out. That's really um the only one that has a big shot, and I do think it'll have a lot of support. Um there. Yeah. So oh, yeah, I, I think yeah. you've added in the picture. In. I've added in no. I mean, it's just I mean, all you really need to say is it's gonna get like five tech noms and an acting win. And it's like that that's got to get this picture. I mean, at, at this point, compared to the journey of the first one, it's outpacing the first Black Panther's Oscar yeah. trajectory. Yeah, I mean, that's why I'm like, I feel like you gotta at least take it seriously. And listen, I also think it's a possibility that come Oscar morning, they go for something that's smaller scene, be that triangle of sadness, be that after. Could scene. underperform in the text too, and just get like three texts and i think angela bassett's still winning honestly yeah. but it, i just the producer because let's be honest the producers guild hold some weight i do think that black panther has a stronger yeah, chance than glass onion so as far as, glass as, onion far as the, yeah. if you're reading the tea leaves and you're ignoring the top seven that you already know are getting in mm-hmm. if you're looking at the three that popped up here and saying well one of them should translate i think the one that probably has the best chance is the one that's going to have tech and above the line consideration. And that's yeah. Black I agree. I agree. And there's a, I don't think there's a chance for Glass Onion, to be honest. I think it'll have the same Oscar nominations that the first film got, which is just screenplay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It really, it's underperformed pretty much everywhere but PGA. So there's that. And yeah, I don't think Glass Onion or The Whale are going to get in there. I think it's going to go eight for 10. And then my last two spots are, yeah, because I have Black Panther getting in. Then I would have All Quiet and Women Talking. That's probably where I would lean right now with Babylon missing. I'm worrying women talking is going to be that Carol trajectory that I mentioned to you. And Carol at least got six nominations. Yeah. I think women talking will be lucky if it gets three. Um, so I worry. I mean, we'll see. I'm real. Let's see. What, what are your talking. last two? I have, I have no. I, currently, it's the whale and Babylon. But I do not feel okay. strong about that. Okay. I, yeah. Yeah, and I, I mean, I guess I feel stronger. I mean, Black Panther's eight, but I still don't feel great about that. Yeah. I don't know. It's clear we'll seven, see. and then the rest, who knows? Yeah. True um, history. We should... DGA? Is that the last DGA, one? DGA, yes. Where some big surprises here. No Cameron or Lerman. I think 
two directors kind of expected to get in here. They are kind of fit the DGA brand. Um, they're a little more commercial, whereas the Oscar directors branch goes for a little more international and um, arts here picks per se. Um, so the nominees here were Spielberg, the Daniels, McDonough, um, Kaczynski, and uh, Todd Field. Which I yeah. think they usually go four for five. And I think you got a clear four there of Field, Daniels, McDonough, Spielberg, and then Kaczynski's going to miss. And that fifth spot is where it's up in the air. Who would, who I mean, would listen, have? I will count it out completely that he's going to miss. I do think I don't I'm not predicting him, but I don't yeah. don't count him out. Um, I'd count him out. Yes. <laughs> Um, I don't know. It's just, you know, we'll see. Cause I, again, I feel that the Oscars are going to be the ones that are most behind Top Gun. So I'm never going to doubt that Top Gun will do well with them. I think the DJ is a little more commercial than the director's branch of the Oscars though. I agree with that. I just, cause I feel that people are going to be predict, they're going to be putting down in our, uh, in our eyes, Top Gun for visual effects, maybe. Mm -hmm. Right. And sound. it's going to be effects. Nom, yeah. Visual effects, sound, cinematography. Editing. Film editing. How do you give it all those things and then not even consider it for best director? Like, I mean, didn't even move. Yeah, but I. Which is also happening with James Cameron. It's different because Denis Villeneuve was in fantasy sci fi. I do think there's a difference here. Well, then I'll say Denis Villeneuve for James Cameron, who also that is going to true. miss the Oscars. That, I took him out before. I took Cameron out before DGA, I think for Baz Luhrmann because Elvis was surging. And mm -hmm. I think it's even more likely now. I, I think Cameron when Avatar launched, was like, oh my God. But Strong. now that it's, it's so funny to me. I think now that it's going to be a $2 billion grocer, I think that hurts him. Because now like he's, he's- He's got it. Yeah. He's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Same. I mean, the two highest gross movies of the year, they're like the directors. They don't, they don't need it. Um, yeah. yeah. And I do think that fifth spot is going to be an artsier, probably international pick, which right now is where I would probably lean Burger, just because it's the biggest international contender. And when you look at it directing wise, it's going to get a lot of tech noms. It's a big directing achievement. I know he's not a name, but I just don't know who else I would put there. I think Lerman is still possible. Lerman's possible. Because we usually. Is possible. I think that film's kind of, I mean, it's possible, but yeah. Uh, just because he have... is well known and he's like, he's that Thomas Vinterberg type of. I, I think Decision to Leave would need one other thing besides international feature then to get nominated for. Like even yeah. Cold War got cinematography on top That's of international true. and director. And I'm not sure where Decision to Leave would get that. Yeah. I honest. mean, I mean, I Bardo is more likely to get cinema cinematography international and director, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, some people are projecting SS Rajamuli. Good luck to you. Our you sound, our, crazy. Our, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So Charlotte I Wells, I think worth mentioning. I think we'll do well at the BAFTAs. Um, and there's usually one director. I mean, this also applies to Lerman, whose film in most years premiered at Cannes. Um, so it's another thing to listen. Look at. You could see a possibility for Triangle of Sadness to get picture nominated, director nominated, Dolly De Leon in supporting actress, and then pick up that fifth original screen screenplay. Yeah, you could see that happen. And yeah, I would have also see After Sun take that spot and do actor and directing i'm less confident about that i honestly say yeah. burger lerman um who else i mean who would you have ruben oslin because ruben oslin i think has didn't he win yeah. in 2017 or 18 so he's, he's yeah he's an he's academy well award winner he's well regarded he went to can with this movie i think it won the palm door right he did, yeah you know dolly de leon does have a presence um, mm -hmm. she did get in at SAG but I do think that doesn't mean that it's over she could end up being my Nina Haas spot um, yeah I think that's and that could end up being your best picture number 10 and Neon, could be. Neon won with Parasite a couple years ago they're good campaigners they are I'm waiting for the BAFTAs to kind of help the BAFTAs in terms of what they're going to nominate I think are going to really help us in these final spots in all the categories um, I think they could really go for Dolly DeLeon in the film in general but if they don't, then I think the film's probably done. Mm -hmm. Personally, we'll see. Um, I mean, yeah. it's a, it's a wacky movie. I love it. As you said, it, it was like right outside my top ten, and maybe when I rewatch it, would climb back in there. Um, so we'll see. But I could. It, it just depends because I feel like Babylon and Triangle of Sadness are kind of like spiritual siblings in a weird way. So it's yeah. interesting 
what one they'll lean towards. I just feel like they'll lean Babylon more because it has the movie stars and it has other nominations guaranteed in the crafts. So I I wonder. I I do too. Yes, definitely. And then first time feature, I think, is going to clearly be a Charlotte Wells win. So that will also help her here. If she, I mean, listen, that'd be crazy. If Charlotte Wells can get in, in so if she wins the first time feature at DGA and then she went, if she gets in at BAFTA, then maybe. But I still think, I think it's, that will happen. But I still am not confident in putting her in director. Yeah. You look at the Emerald Fennell trajectory, which is she was the, the female director who broke late. Um, and I just, I feel like you have to compare female directors because they're just, they're in, unfortunately in a completely different environment as far as getting exactly, yes. awareness. And, but she picked up a Golden Globe nomination. I believe she, did she win the first feature at DGA? I feel like she did. Um, um, I think she was nominated in director overall at DGA. That too. So like, again, she, she was able to build that momentum. Chloe Zhao was just up top. Um, yeah. So I, I, I would. I think. I feel like you would need that momentum that Fennell had, and I don't know if Charlotte Wells does. I don't think so right now, but I. I do think it could be a late search. I wouldn't completely throw her out. Um, I'm sticking Burger right now. Who Who would your five be? If you had to pick, I guess if I had to pick, it would be Boz Lerman right now. Okay. But I do like yeah. my Ruben Oslin argument. <laughs> yeah, I think that that's also very possible. Um, yeah, that's it for PGA, DGA, um, SAG, and Golden Globes. It's a lot. Um, speaking of a lot, the Critics' Choice are this upcoming weekend. Um, and they're usually pretty predictable, to be honest. They were very predictable in terms of what they nominated. So I think we can quickly say what we think is going to win in each category. Um, oh, off. excuse me. Um, Emerald Fennell was not nominated. I think potentially they might have the rule that you can't be in both. I think so, because she was in... She was in the main category. Darius yeah. Martyr for Sound of Metal. Uh, that very deserving. That was a very deserving win. Very deserving. Should have carried over to the Oscars. But um, but yeah, Critics' Choice. Uh, their nominees in Best Picture. I, I Honestly, for Best Picture, I think they'll go everything ever all at once. Or to guess. But I think if they... Yeah, I think I think they'll still go with everything ever all at once, to be honest. I don't think there's a strong enough movie for them to be like, that's a clear Oscar frontrunner to predict. So I think they'll stick with everything everywhere. It's a critics love it. Yes. Um, I think it's very possible that everything everywhere wins. I do think Banshees has a chance. Um, I'm just, you know, you look at their past wins, like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, they seem to go with whatever the front runner is in the current moment. So that's why I'm mm-hmm. thinking Ailments 2 could pop up in there. When they were voting, it was probably everything everywhere who is the front runner. Yeah. I mean, I don't think we have a front runner, to be honest. I think it's those. No. Everything ever had a brief maybe front runner four. period. I, I could see Tar. I could see Tar. I would love it. I would love it. I just, I do think there are some members in Critics' Choice who are have a little more commercial mindset, and I don't think it works well with them. Can I just really quickly, because I think as far as the other things we, we've mentioned, the people who are going to win acting and, and director yeah. potentially, what do you think of Tar? Because it seems that it went through the Critics' season beautifully. But got, nobody's like, really yeah. considering it strongly in director screenplay I think it's, or picture. I think it's possible that it takes a Nomadland route of um, direct winning director, picture, and actress, which would be a nice haul. I mean, Nomadland also. I, I love that haul. I would love it too. A little more of a um, artsy, uh, less traditional pick like Tar would be. I don't think it's going to happen, but I'm just putting that in my mind as a possibility. Um there's a lot of support for the film. I mean, Martin I Scorsese had world... clouds lift when he saw it. Yeah, because I could see a world where, let's say it wins Critics' Choice, which it could. I mean, it, the Critics' groups loved it, so it could win Critics' Choice. But I do think yeah. they, the Critics' Choice would be a little bit more like broad as than the Critics' yeah. groups. But if Tar could maybe pull something off a of Critics' Choice and then do very well at BAFTA and Kate Blanchett continues to win everywhere... It could happen. I, I don't know. It just I feel it that could. it would need a seen, late search. Yeah, it just it seems to get in everywhere. People seem to love this movie, but yet nobody seems to take it as seriously as like Banshees of Inisherin. And I I wonder if that ends up helping it because then it doesn't have to maintain this front runner status. It can be like this parasite where it has passion, but people aren't pointing the spotlight to it until the right moment. Um, yeah, I, I would wonder. love to see it. I would love it. But that's um, also me hoping that something happens in Tar. Yeah, me too. 
Uh, and then director here, they'll probably go with the Daniels, unless, I mean, if they want to protect the Oscars, they could go with Spielberg, but I still think they'll lean Daniels. I, I can't with Chris, because they can do ties, and they do ties. A, well, so where they're going to do it, where they're going to do a tie is clearly best actors. I think they're going to tie Yo and Blanchett. If they do, clearly, I would like put money on that, that they're going to tie Blanchett. And do you think Angela Bassett is winning supporting actress? Yes, I do. Okay. I, that's pretty clear to me. I feel like there's a lot of Critics' Choice members who are like Marvel fans. I think so that you think in particular. The only, you think the only place she's not going to win is BAFTA? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did Mark yeah. Rylance win BAFTA? Uh, probably. I f- what has happened? Why am I now the one doubting Angela? I'm Bassett? just more confident in Bassett, I guess. Yeah. We've we've switched roles. Before you know it, you'll be more confident in Butler. And I'll be like, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I listen, we, we try to make this entertaining for you all. It would be so boring if we were the same people from July yeah. on. Yeah, and I think supporting actor is clearly key. Yeah. Juan going to win everywhere. Actress will be a tie, and I think Butler will win um, yeah. lead actor. And then young actor and actress, I think, will be LaBelle probably. But I would look out for Frankie Cor- Corio for actress, and there's a lot of passion there. Ensemble, I think, would probably... Well, will they give everything everywhere, both um, picture and ensemble? We'll see. Uh, Mark Rylance was nominated for the, uh, won the BAFTA, but uh, Sylvester Stallone was not nominated for BAFTA. Mm. I could Bassett see could. she could not be nominated. She was shortlisted, but the BAFTAs are traditionally a very white organization. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and I'm also interested to see original song if RRR can win there again at Critics' um, Choice. Yeah, I think it will, in particular at Critics' Choice. Yeah, and then screenplay, I think, would be. Everything, uh, well, probably Banshees, actually, for screenplay. Then Adapted, I think, Women Talking, which will hopefully help its adapted chances at the Oscars. Yeah, like how Greta Gerwig winning the Critics' Choice for Little Women helped her chances in 2019? No, no. I think there are some critics who are like, there wasn't as much divisiveness around um, Jojo Rabbit. I know there was some divisiveness, but The Whale is like, I think critics in particular, I don't think it's going over well with a lot of people. It seems like all the critics liked um, liked Women Talking. But, Watch Top Gun Maverick wins oh, best adapted screenplay. Yeah, yeah, that um, would be something. That's okay. for sure. Where can they find you, Mr. Jack? Oscar Film SC on Twitter, where I will be tweeting um what I think will win every category here. If you want the nitty gritty, but we just went over the main categories there. I don't think they'll do anything too surprising. Um, and yeah, stay tuned for more award season coverage. Surpri- uh, subscribe, like all that fun stuff. How about you, Anthony? At Anthony underscore post on Twitter, Instagram, Letterbox, and I started Serialized, which is the TV version of Letterbox. I don't think it was oh. a company, but I'm trying it out. Um, I'm having fun with it. And then YouTube, Spoilers Ahead with Anthony Post, where I'll be doing my favorite films of the year. Full discussion upcoming soon. Fun, fun. I'll have to try that out. But yeah, thank you all for watching. 